I bet going to college and getting a corporate job, I'll make more money than you as a plumber out of high school. Bet. All right, four years later, I've got my bachelor's degree and I have a starting salary of $60,000 at my corporate job and my net worth is only negative $200,000 after all that student loan debt. Nice. While you were doing that, these past four years, I was living at home, working as a plumber's apprentice, making $40,000 a year. So I took home about 30,000 or so. I invested 50% of that into a low cost broad-based market index fund and my net worth is now $36,000. Time sure flies. It's been another four years. I've gotten a promotion since and I've made $80,000 a year on average and I invest about 25% or so. So my net worth now is only negative $170,000. Nice. I'm now a journeyman and I average about $70,000 a year for the past four years. I invest 50% of it and my net worth now is $108,000. Another four years. Now I've averaged $110,000 for the past four years. I invest about 25% of that per year. That's my take home. And my net worth is only negative $77,000. Huh. Interesting. For the last four years, my salary has been about $85,000 a year. I continue to invest aggressively. My net worth now is over $220,000. So then, do you really need a college degree to make a lot of money? Hey folks, it's John back with another daily finance tip. Would you believe it if I told you that Americans owed a staggering $1.7 trillion in student debt? And it's not like this debt is slowing down anytime soon. As more and more students graduate, they're loading up on more and more debt. In fact, some of them aren't even graduating, yet still loading up on that debt. They're starting to ask themselves, is college even worth it? After all, these four years spent at an undergrad institution are supposed to prepare us for financial success, right? But yet, why didn't anyone mention all of this debt burden that would be associated to getting what's supposed to be the ticket to financial success? In this video, we're not gonna debate whether or not it's worth it to go to college. Instead, I'm just gonna talk to you about the highest paying jobs that don't require a college degree. Does that sound good? Cool, if you're new to the channel, please feel free to tap that little thumb icon to help spread the good word. We're gonna go ahead and dive right into it. Coming in at number six, we have police officers and detectives. Now, it's probably pretty self-explanatory what they do. So we'll talk a little bit more about the requirements. Based on what state you live in, a good chunk of states actually don't require a college degree. So you can just get in with a high school diploma. However, you will need to be a US citizen and over the age of 21. In addition, in a majority of states, you're gonna have to go through the police academy. Now, as far as job outlook, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, this is projected to grow at about a pace of 3%, which is slightly below average, but if you apply the 3% against the total number of positions, about over 800,000 or so, that's a pretty healthy growth rate. Coming in at number five, we have web developers with an average salary of $78,300. And on the top end, well over $150,000. I do wanna take a minute to pause here and say, this is base salary, not inclusive of a total package. So there might be people who are getting hired with stock options and RSUs that are pushing that number way bigger. But for the purposes of this video, we're just talking about the base salary. So as far as what do web developers do, they build and maintain websites. As far as education level, you can get a web developer job with just a high school diploma. However, there are some that are gonna request a bachelor's degree. And as far as job outlook, for the next 10 years, this is projected to grow at a rate of about 23%, which is incredible. So it clearly shows that there's a huge demand for web developers. And if you're interested to get started, one way could potentially be looking at either online courses or a boot camp. Coming in at number four, we have dental hygienists with the average salary at $77,810 and some of the top in the industry making well over $102,000. Although dental hygienists don't require a bachelor's degree, you will have to get an associate's degree. In addition, this is the first job on the list that we see where you will have to get licensed. As far as work environment, all dental hygienists work within a dental office. And as for job growth outlook, the Bureau of Labor Statistics expects that dental hygienists are growing at a pace of about 9% a year, which is faster actually than the industry average within overall healthcare. Coming in at number three, we have power plant operators. The average power plant operator makes $94,790 and with the top in the industry making well over $100,000. As far as education requirement, you don't need a bachelor's degree. A high school diploma will get you started, but there's gonna be a lot of on the job training. And the job, as the title would suggest, is working in power plants. So you're gonna be physically on site and typically working in shifts anywhere from eight to 12 hours rotating. 
The one thing I do want to point out about power plant operators is the fact that this is the only job on the list in which the Bureau of Labor Statistics is actually expecting there will be a decline in the number of available jobs over the next 10 years at a rate of about 15% or so. So if this is something you might be interested to jump into, just be cautious of that, that it might be a very tight market to actually crack in. Coming in at number two, we have elevator installer and repairer. The median salary here is going to be $97,460 a year and with the top in the industry making well over $130,000. The education requirement is just a high school diploma. In addition to your high school diploma, almost all elevator repair and installers are going to go through an apprenticeship program. The job itself can be pretty demanding as you are going to be installing and repairing elevators. And so you might be on a job site that might be a little bit cramped. In addition, there might be situations in which you are on call 24 hours. And as far as growth for this job, it's looking at about 3% or so for the next 10 years, which is again, a little bit below the industry average. And coming in at number one, we have air traffic controllers. The median salary here is about $129,000 and with the top in the field making well over $185,000. To get started, you just need a high school degree and the rest is gonna be extensive on the job training. And if we look at the Bureau of Labor Statistics, this job is projected to grow at 1%. So it's just kind of keep an even keel. Of course, if you can crack in, this job is gonna allow you to make well over $100,000 with no college degree. Though if you ask me, I would say this job on the list is probably the most stressful in that you obviously are responsible for the safety and well-being of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of passengers a day. In addition, this is gonna be shift work. So you'll have days, you'll have nights, and obviously weekends as well. And that's it guys. Hopefully this list was short and sweet and really got to the point of the fact that you might not need a college degree to start making a ton of money, especially making over $100,000. Though I do want to pause here for a moment and also ask you a quick question. And that is, at what point did you think making $100,000 was a lot of money? And I ask that because a lot of us, when we were growing up, right, for me, that would have been like 15, 16, 17 years ago, where I thought making 100K was a ton of money. But we forget to adjust our goals for inflation meaning $100,000 15 or 16 years ago is very different than $100,000 today in terms of purchasing power. And as a quick aside, let's actually see what it looks like to have our money be worth less day over day. So this right here is a Bureau of Labor Statistics inflation calculator. I know it looks like it's out of the 90s. Ignore that. This thing works. So what I did was I went onto the top here and I plugged in $100,000 in 2005, which I would say for me was a point in time that I thought that was a lot of of money. I go ahead and hit calculate and look at that. You would need $150,000 in 2022. This means $150,000 today buys the same as $100,000 in 2005. So then what would $100,000 today buy in 2005? Well, it's kind of annoying that there's no reverse calculator, but I kind of just guessed and I plugged in $67,000 in 2005 and voila, that would equate to $100,000 in 2022. Meaning if you cross 100K today, you're just hitting over $67,000 from 2005. Now. I'm not gonna say it's not a lot of money because it is, but I just wanna say as you're progressing and going through your career that you adjust whatever financial goals you had growing up with inflation. And with that, I will leave you to it. Thank you all again for joining me and I will catch you in the next video. Peace.